my name is David Sinclair and I'm a professor at Harvard Medical School. Uh, I'm in the genetics department and I've been studying for most of my life why we age and why we hopefully don't have to age so fast. Well, my vision is that we shouldn't have to worry about getting cancer when we're 60 or 70. We shouldn't worry about being frail when we're 80. Uh, and instead, we should have a world where reaching 70 and 80 is considered a good time to start a new career or go on holidays with your grandkids or even your great grandkids. Uh, this world is achievable. Uh, we know this from the science. Um, and anyone who says that it's not good to keep people healthier for longer must also be, be against medical research. Um, this just is because we're addressing aging has a chance of not just treating one disease, but treating almost all major diseases of the world with perhaps a single treatment. Well, in my lab, we, we like to understand why do we age in the first place? Uh, what's driving that process? Is there one major thing or are there 50 different things? Uh, and we, we believe that there are about nine major things that go wrong during aging, but one in particular seems to be very important. Uh, and that's what we're focusing on now, which it's called, um, well, the theory is called the information theory of aging. And the idea is that our bodies have storage of information, but at, over time we lose it, similar to how you might have a glitch in the software. And then what we've just recently discovered uh, and we're about to publish actually, is that we found a reset switch. We can reboot the software uh, and restore the age. Uh, in the case of a mouse, we can restore the age of the eye and those my old mice can actually see again. So to summarize, we're looking for why we age and now that we think we have a, an idea, we can reset the clock of aging in the body. Yeah, well, so the the information in our bodies, there are two main types, there's the DNA, which is digital information, the letters A, C, T, G. Uh, there's another level of information, which we call not the, not the genome, but the epigenome, which are the structures in the cell that tell us tell it to read gene A, but shut off gene B. And uh, it's different for every tissue and cell type, but it's essential because we're made up of different cells and a nerve cell has to rem remember to be a nerve cell and a skin cell has to remember to be a skin cell uh, for sometimes decades. That's very important to be healthy and to be young and to heal if we get damaged. But what we are finding is that aging is due to cells losing their memory. That gene, you know, gene A that was on now gets switched off and gene B that should be off comes on and the cells don't work. And we think this is the major reason we get old and, and we have diseases. And so what we're working on is how do you flip the reset switch and get gene A to come on again from being switched off? And in other words, how do you make a nerve cell in the brain remember how to be young again? And uh, that's, I think we've, we've made a breakthrough in being able to do that. Uh, well, so there's a couple of ways to do that. One is that there are proteins that control which genes are on and off. Uh, there are a set of genes called the sirtuins that we've been working on now for, oh gee, you know, since I was 25. Uh, we discovered these sirtuin genes in yeast cells and now we find them in our bodies. And they're part of this process of slowing down the, the change in the epigenome. So we, we're trying to activate those processes in the body. Uh, we can directly activate these enzymes with chemicals. We can also raise the levels of a molecule called NAD. NAD is the fuel, the, the gasoline, the petrol for these enzymes, which we lose as we get older. So those are some approaches. That's one set. And then the second set, which we've used to restore the vision in blind mice, is a gene therapy. We put a combination of three genes uh, with a virus into the eye. And then we can turn those genes on with an antibiotic. We've engineered it that way. So you can turn it on and off just by giving the mouse doxycycline. Uh, and then what we get over three weeks is that the nerves go become young. Some of them regrow and uh, we get the vision back. And the idea there is that we could use either gene therapy to rejuvenate parts of the body, or we could find a way to do the same thing eventually with a pill or three pills. Um, but the fact that we can 
reset the body and get vision back is for me proof that the body has a memory of youth and how to reset the system of which genes are on and off. Uh, right. So I'm entrepreneurial by, uh, by design. Uh, it's because I, I want to have medicines uh, to people that uh, will prove that we can slow and even reverse aging. And so I've been, I've been involved and in, over the years in uh, more than a dozen different companies. Uh, there's one now called Life Biosciences, which is getting ready over the next two years to do the first human study of reprogramming. Um, Life Biosciences is based in Boston. Um, there's a company called Metro Biotech, which is making over the last seven years molecules that will raise the NAD levels. As I mentioned, the fuel for the sirtuin defenses. And those are clinical trials that were, have been ongoing now for two years, uh, primarily safety studies at this point. But now just in 2020, we've started a couple of trials. Uh, one actually in to treat COVID-19, to try and help older people be have an immune system like a younger person. And another trial that's just getting started in Philadelphia that will treat a rare genetic disease called Friedrich's ataxia, which results in uh, a loss of energy and patients become wheelchair bound and disabled. And we think that by raising NAD, we can give them the energy and survival. We don't tackle aging directly because that would take too long and be too expensive initially. Well, we will have to see. What, what I can tell you for sure is that there's no biological reason why we couldn't live for hundreds of years. There are many animals and certainly plants that do this all the time. So biology is biology. We, we can learn from other species that live a long time uh, and use that and create our own evolution the way that we want. Uh, instead of just relying on, uh, you know, millions of years of selection for long life. But it, it will be doable. You, you know, I'm a Harvard professor, so every time I throw out a number, I'm going to upset somebody. So we actually know for a fact that people can live to 120. Um, apparently, a, a, a French woman lived to 122. So we, we know that that's possible. And perhaps we can get more of us closer to that point where we can actually one day expect to live to 105, 110, but be healthy. That's the point. I'm, I'm not trying to extend old age. I'm trying to keep people younger for longer. Uh, and it turns out if you don't get a disease, you don't die uh, typically, unless you have an accident. And so we start with maintaining the health of the body and then we get longer life as a side effect. Uh, you know, you, you could speculate, you could say maybe in a few hundred years, people will, will be able to break, I don't know, 170. It, it's possible, but the longer we live, the harder it gets, actually. And so we need these kind of breakthroughs, like the ones that I mentioned, where we can reset the cell uh, to, to make that possible. And one of the things we don't know that will help clarify that number, or at least make the prediction more accurate, I think, is how many times can you reset a cell? We, we've reset the eye once. And I'd love to know if we can do it 10 times. That would be uh, an exciting possibility and give me more optimism that we could even go beyond uh, the known maximum of humans, which is 122.